that we shouldn't be scared. We need to be aware of it. We need to be cautious, but not scared. That great mystic and doctor of the church, St. Teresa Avila, gives us an idea of how we should react towards all this. Quote, I don't understand these fears, the devil, the devil, when we can say God, God, and make the devil tremble. Without doubt, I fear those who have such great fear of the devil more than I feel the devil himself, for he can't do anything to me. Although sometimes I saw devils, I pay no more attention to them than to flies. They're such cowards that when they observe they are esteemed but little, their strength leaves them. These enemies don't know how to attack head-on, except for those whom they see surrender to them. Close quote, St. Teresa of Avila. I pay no more attention to them than flies. They're such cowards that when they observe they are esteemed but little, their strength leaves them. I don't understand these fears when we can say, God, God, make the devil tremble. St. Teresa makes a great comparison between devils and flies. After all, where do flies accumulate? Manure piles, stinking bodies, rotten things, dead carcasses. And devils are just filthy little beasts that love sin and degradation. The spiritual equivalent of manure piles. Things like spiritually dead souls and stinking rotten occasions of thin. Especially things like certain aisles and grocery stores, the occult, the New Age movement, witchcraft, Ouija boards, drugs. Pornography, tarot cards, psychics, birth control pills, astrology, things like that. So if we really want to avoid these filthy little beasts, we've got to avoid sin. We've got to stay in the state of grace and keep the commandments, get to confession regularly, and make fervent communions. All those ways of avoiding the flies are kind of obvious. We're not going to deal with that today. Today, what we're interested in is specifically how to fend off these filthy, filthy little spiritual flies when they're pestering us. So we're going to take a few minutes to consider some useful spiritual fly swatters, spiritual fly swatters that everyone here can use. We'll look at some prayers first and then at some sacramentals. Prayers. I use this particular prayer all the time. It's the bare bones version of a prayer that exorcists use to stop or subdue demonic manifestations. But this particular prayer we're going to review here, it's not an exorcism. We're not allowed to do that. That's something that the bishop does or a priest he appoints. Okay, these are prayers. Anyone here can do these prayers. The devil hates these prayers so much that he tries to convince people they can, cannot or should not use these prayers. So this past Friday, that's two days ago, I contacted an expert. This is a priest who works full-time as an exorcist in a very large diocese. That's what he does for a living. I asked him to comment, quote, Any believing Catholic can privately bind evil spirits. This has been the practice from the time of the early church. It is evidenced in the writings of a number of the fathers of the church. It is an entirely different matter when someone is praying publicly in the name of the church. Then an ordained deacon or priest is required. Close quote. So any believing Catholic can privately bind evil spirits. In other words, don't go out and try to do exorcisms, but you can privately bind evil spirits. That's been the practice since the time of the early church, the very beginning. Here's the prayer. In the name of Jesus, I bind you, spirit of blank. We'll explain that blank in just a second. In the name of Jesus, I bind you, spirit of blank, and send you to the foot of the cross to be judged by the Lord. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I bind you, spirit of blank, and send you to the foot of the cross to be judged by our Lord. If you don't have that, in the name of Jesus, I bind you, spirit of blank, and send you to the foot of the cross to be judged by our Lord. What is blank? Blank is where we insert a description of whatever is pestering us right then. Things like lust, panic, anger, fear, screaming kids, whatever particular thing is bothering us or tempting us. If it's being caused by the filthy little flies, we can tell right away just by praying this prayer a few times. For, you know, why? Because if you prayed a few times and it stops, that's what it was. If it doesn't stop, that's not what it was. It's that simple. You'll tell, it's diagnostic. You do it once or twice. Sometimes you do it and it just stops right away. You go, oh, mission accomplished. Other times it just keeps going. But do it two or three times and if it doesn't stop, then that's not who's behind it. I mean, unless your Padre Pio can actually see him, this is one of the ways to tell. One of the particular priests I know has a terrible time sometime at night with these stupid flies, but he just says, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. Any spirit that interferes with sleep in any way and send you for the cross to be judged by our Lord. And then it's all peaceful. So he says, in the name of Jesus, I bind any spirit here that interferes with sleep in any way 
and send you before the cross to be judged by the Lord. Now, we don't do it for the whole universe. Just what's bothering us, our immediate vicinity, or someone specific that we're praying for. They don't have to be near us. It could be someone on, like a child on the other side of the world, all right? We're not bound by distance. Our prayers aren't limited by some kind of distance in that way. If we just want to clear the air, and we don't have a specific thing we've noticed, here's the approach to use. In the name of Jesus, I bind any spirit here that is not of the Holy Spirit, and send you to the foot of the cross to be judged by our Lord. Okay, that's just sort of bringing out the shotgun and shooting in the general direction. In the name of Jesus, I bind any spirit here that's not of the Holy Spirit and send you to the foot of the cross to be judged by our Lord. One more time. In the name of Jesus, I bind any spirit here that's not of the Holy Spirit and send you to the foot of the cross to be judged by our Lord. So we can be specific and name a temptation or problem. In the name of Jesus, I bind any spirit of blank and send you to the foot of the cross to be judged by our Lord. Or we can clear all, all the filthy flies with, in the name of Jesus, I bind any spirit here that's not of the Holy Spirit and send you to the foot of the cross to be judged by our Lord. Okay? In past years, we've also mentioned the precious blood prayer. That's also incredibly powerful in driving off these filthy flies. It's precious blood wash over me, or precious blood wash over me, protect me from the wickedness and snares the devil. Precious blood wash over me, or precious blood wash over me, and protect me from the wickedness and snares of the devil. And if you're having some kind of horrible movie in your mind and you do that and it disappears, you know who was the projectionist, okay? Remember, do these things. We don't have to be in the state of grace. We don't have to be in the state of grace because it's not relying on some power within us. It's the power of Christ our Lord in the holy name, okay? But if we're not in the state of grace, we're already in the dominion of the devil to some degree. So what you want to do is go back to a confessional, okay? Don't waste any time. But these prayers don't require you to be in the state of grace. Everyone already knows the importance of St. Michael prayer. You should say your angel of God every day. The Sanctus is also a useful and powerful prayer. So prayers for swatting filthy flies. Specific temptation or problem, in the name of Jesus, I bind you spirit of blank and send you to the foot of the cross to be judged by our Lord. Or we can clear the air with, in the name of Jesus, I bind any spirit here that's not of the Holy Spirit and send you to the foot of the cross to be judged by our Lord. Also, precious blood wash over me, or precious blood wash over me, and protect me from the wickedness and snares the devil. Okay, that's prayers. Sacramentals. Quick review, we know all this already too. Sign of the cross is incredibly powerful. If something's bothering you, Make the sign of the cross, okay? Everyone here should also be enrolled in and wearing your brown scapular. Make sure you have a Saint, blessed St. Saint Benedict's medal on it. If you have one that's blessed, that one has an, a specific exorcism on him to keep away these flies. And, of course, you shouldn't leave home without a miraculous medal somewhere on your person. Keep a blessed rosary in your pocket, but don't just keep it in your pocket. Pray it every day. All right? Have some blessed salt around your house to cook with. If you're going somewhere and you have to stay at a hotel or a motel, have a little Ziploc bag or something, a blessed salt. And you just take a little pinch and put it in the four corners of the room and flick a little across across the, the room. That'll take care of it. It's not a volume thing. You don't need a scoop shovel. You don't need to be crunching across the floor. It just works. It's it's spiritual. So you just need a little teeny bit. It's not. It's. It, I'm serious because sometimes people think, well, if a little is good, more is... It doesn't change the blessing. So there's no point in having small salt all over the place, okay? So you, you, you can do that. That'll clear them out of that hotel room because you can bet, unless you're the first one there, there's probably problems, what with the TV and other things. Okay, so uh, uh, have some blessed olive oil to cook with and to put any place on, on any place that ails you with the sign of the cross. It also has that special blessing on it to keep away bad dreams and so forth that are caused by these flies. So you put a little on your thumb and every night you make a little cross on the kids' foreheads when you bless them before they go to bed, okay? And of course, after the first and third mass every month, we bless uh, salt and, and, and oil here. Of course, holy water. Everybody should have that in your home, and certainly every bedroom should have a font. If you don't have a font in every bedroom, do it. You don't have to buy something fancy. You can use a bowl. I mean, you could cut a plastic bottle into it. It doesn't have to be expensive, but you should have something there with holy water in it. And, and it'd be a good idea to have a little a small bottle by the bed or something. We, we, we keep spray bottles by the bed, but we're priests, huh? Anyway, uh, you just flick a little of that holy water. They're out of there. I mean, th- think of the power of holy water and think w- w- what clowns these are. If I throw holy water at you like we did, that's one of the reasons for the spare just made. It wasn't like you all went flying out of the pews if you're not in a good way. They're out of here. I mean, it, it wipes them out. That's one of the reasons for the spare just. They're out of there. Okay. We've just learned about some of this armor of God. Let us arm ourselves by avoiding sin, the occasion to sin, using these prayers and these sacramentals daily. As the great St. Teresa says, quote, If we abhor all for God and we embrace the cross and try truly to serve God, the devil will flee these truths like the plague. 
a fig for all the devils, because they shall fear me. A fig for all the devils, for they shall fear us.